Jonah Ballo here for Knicks.com. The squad facing two rival opponents in the Celtics and Nets. And Steve Kerr's Warriors roll into town here at the Mecca. Don't miss a second of the action right here on Knicks All Access Weekly. Tuesday night at the Mecca for the Celtics' first trip to MSG this season. While Boston has struggled at times this year, the road squad was seeking a win in NYC to keep hope alive for a playoff spot in the East. The Celtics, um, you know, they're a good, a good young team. They're playing faster. They're, they're trying to really attack early as much as they can. And, you know, we, we have to be ready to play right from the start. Don't look now, but the Knicks have won four straight at Madison Square Garden. And tonight, look to make it five. The guys in green started strong by posting a 57-point first half and a 13-point lead over the Knicks as Avery Bradley scored 13 for the Celtics. Bradley doing a little shaking of his own. Long two-pointer. They are five for five from the field. Darren Fisher quickly calls timeout. He shot the ball well right from the beginning, and it was hard for us to kind of Contain them. They came out, they, they hit some shots, and they, they got their confidence early. Out of the locker room at the halftime break, Carmelo Anthony found the shooting touch by hitting four of eight from the floor and scored 10 of the Knicks' 28 in the third frame. We had to fight back, and then by the time we made a run in the third quarter, uh, going into the fourth quarter, uh, they made a run too. They made a run right back. Jared Sollinger scored eight in the final quarter and finished with 22. Bradley added 26 and the Celtics escaped Manhattan with a 108-97 win to even the season series at one apiece. I felt like we were right there in the second half and just couldn't get over that hump. We gotta put this one behind us. So it's not going to get easier from here on out, so we just gotta keep working. Wednesday afternoon at MSG Training Center and the Knicks return to work with a renewed sense of energy at the practice session. I think more of our guys, you know, understanding and being more committed to purposeful practice and, and doing things that are meaningful and not just, you know, kind of going through the process in, in a rudimentary type of way. That's why we've played better at times in recent weeks. With the focus shifting to another rivalry matchup on Friday night in Brooklyn, the Knicks were hopeful two important frontline players could return to the lineup including Amari Stoudemire. You know me, man, I want to play. You know, I'm competitive, I want to get out there and help my guys as much as possible. Definitely would be excited to, you know, get Cole back and, and possibly Amari as well. We had a couple days off, a couple days rest to, you know, kind of get back that energy, kind of gain some momentum a little bit. Him in practice, we had a great practice today, so hopefully we carry that over to tomorrow. Out to Brooklyn where the Nets reside, the Knicks welcome back Amari Stoudemire and Cole Aldridge to the lineup to counter the size of the Nets. New York was looking for revenge after falling in a narrow loss at MSG two months ago. We owe it to ourselves to go out there and play hard and compete. Um, you know, try to come with you know, some, some energy on the road. You know, so it's always always a big game when you're on the road, so it takes that much more focus and that much more energy. It'll be a good atmosphere. Two good, great fan bases will be there uh, cheering their teams on. And now we're going to be ready. We're going to go out there and we're going to give it everything we got. The Nets came out firing in the first quarter by shooting 61% from the floor and a balanced scoring attack while building a 29-21 lead. Williams puts it up over Holloway and hits. It's vintage Williams there. I thought we came out in the third quarter and even a part of the second quarter, uh, you know, with a lot, of, a lot more energy. Um, you know, some toughness. Down 17, the Knicks storm back in the third quarter, reeling off a 14-4 run in the middle of the period and outscoring the Nets 25-15 behind Jose Calderon's nine points in the period. New York seized control by taking a 70-68 lead heading to the final stage. We knew we could do better. Uh, it was only eight points uh, behind at the half, so uh, with some of our mistakes, you know, we knew we could control that. Uh, so we were a little bit more aggressive um, in the second half, just trying to move the ball, try to, to make them work a little bit more than we did in the first half, and um, it worked out. Fourth quarter featured four lead changes as both teams exchanged punches down down the stretch. Trailing by one with 23 seconds left in the contest, the Knicks desperately needed a stop, but Jared Jack found open space and buried the dagger from downtown. Jack setting up from three, bounce it. It just happened so fast, and you know, you turn around, you look up, and the ball's going through the basket. It was deflating, but 
Um, we'll, we'll review the you know the game film and we'll get better from it. We scored 92 points, and um, you know so I don't think our defense was terrible, but uh, you know just not getting a stop there. Uh, we didn't give ourselves a chance to win there at the end. Melo scored 21, Calderon registered 15, and Langston Galloway ripped down 11 boards. On the other side, Brooke Lopez finished with 22 in the Nets' 92-88 victory. Saturday night at the world's most famous arena where the top team in the Western Conference hit the floor with two sharp shooting all-stars in the backcourt. Meanwhile, the Knicks all-star Carmelo Anthony did not suit up due to a recovery day. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are remarkable shooters. They're playing at a high level, but uh, you know, they're, they're a basketball team. They're human beings, uh, and so we still go out there to play the game to win. The first half was all Golden State as Steve Kerr's club tallied 64 points and generated a sizable 24-point advantage, but the resilient Knicks staged a massive comeback in the fourth, reeling off a late 16-4 run and eventually cutting the deficit to just five points. Coach kind of got into us a little bit over on the bench. We should pick up our intensity anyway, so he kind of got on us and, uh, we do that. It happened in the fourth quarter. We were knocking down shots, getting penetration, kicking, having fun. Galloway takes it inside. AC slams it down. And the Knicks are within nine. The Warriors managed to stave off the feisty Knicks despite only scoring 15 fourth quarter points. Langston Galloway scored a team high 15. And Jason Smith finished with a double double in the 106 92 defeat. We're a team that is still working at becoming who we want to be. And we're playing against a lot of teams that are already you know, at a higher level of who they want to be. They have an identity. Uh, we're still becoming the team we want to be. And, um, you know, right now we're learning the hard way that we aren't there yet. 